David Brewster here with another 3 for all, and this is 3 Richie Blackmore Licks from 1972. And of course, Richie Blackmore is a pioneering, you know, rock and hard rock guitar legend. And he influenced everybody that came after him, not to mention influencing people that were around the same time that he debuted. And this includes people like Brian May, uh, obviously Ingbe, you know, Randy Rhodes, but it even filters over into other players. Some people argue that Jimi Hendrix was actually influenced by uh, Richie Blackmore. And, uh, you know, Hendrix died in 1970. Deep Purple debuted in 1968, which a lot of people don't remember that. But, uh, you know, the poses and all the stage antics, you know, on stage. Um, I think some of those ideas may have been kind of shared or borrowed, you know, between a lot of those groups. But I do know that Hendrix was a fan of Richie Blackmore. And Richie, you know, respected Hendrix, too. Which, uh, here's a couple quotes from uh, Richie Blackmore. I feel it's really important to remember that he's also worked with uh, some very, you know, respected and important rock vocalists. You know, Ian Gillen, David Coverdale, Ronnie James Dio, uh, Graham Bonnet, Joe Lynn Turner. You know, there's a lot of musicians that Richie's worked with that are exceptional and, uh, you know, very famous and, and popular. Um, and then you also have to remember just Blackmore's influence, you know, and uh, the licks from this video, you know, came from 1972. I think it was actually a show in Denmark. And when I watched, you know, some of this footage, you know, there were so many things that I, that I recognized as Richie Blackmore, but then I, I noticed some other things where it's like, wow, I'm noticing all these habits and things that other people stole from him. And right off the bat, he was doing this kind of tremolo bar thing where he was spinning his bar around. And that reminded me of Steve Vai. And I thought, hey, I've seen Steve Vai do that before. You know, he was doing volume swells, almost like Van Halen did, you know, in Cathedral. Um, you know, he was doing all these crazy, you know, like guitar aerobics, you know, almost like Hendrix, where he was, you know, holding his guitar up and taking it off, and he was stepping on it and doing all these different things. And, uh, you know, there was tons of feedback and these dive bomb, you know, tremolo licks and harmonics and all that stuff. And when I heard that and watched it, I thought, you know, there's so much going on right there. I mean, you see who it is, but then I started to kind of see other people too, where it was like, gosh, everybody has ripped this guy off. All right, before we dive into the licks, I wanted to reveal, you know, a little bit behind the scenes as far as, you know, Richie's favorite scales, because really, Richie Blackmore, you know, directly influenced a lot of important guitarists, Randy Rhodes and Ingve Malmsteen, you know, being two of the big, you know, big names. And there's a whole bunch of other people too. But both of those guitarists, you know, kind of had a knack of using exotic scales, usually in minor keys. And Randy's really well known for playing a lot of Aeolian and Diminished and stuff. And then Ingve is really well known for playing harmonic minor and Diminished. And then Richie really, uh, and there's a lot of other guitarists too, it's not just Richie Blackmore. Um, but he really was kind of a pioneer as far as introducing, you know, most rock guitarists and rock music fans to some of these exotic, you know, sounds and exotic scales. So we're going to start uh, with just kind of a scale overview, just so you can kind of learn some of these sounds. And, uh, you know, we're going to basically put this in the key of E. So if you've ever taken guitar lessons from me, you would know that I love showing scales in the key of E instead of C or, you know, some other common key. But the main reason why I like showing it in the key of E, aside from it being a popular, you know, key on guitar, is we can use the low E string as a drone. That way you can hear, you know, what you're playing as you play it. So we're going to start with just E Aeolian, or the natural minor scale. And this is just kind of a starting point. But uh, the notes there would be E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, like this. <laughs> And then the first modification we're going to do is we're going to change to harmonic minor and we're going to raise that D note up to a D sharp. And this is Yngwie's favorite scale, but I'm pretty sure he learned it from watching and listening to uh, Richie Blackmore, which looks like this. <laughs> Now, the fifth mode of harmonic minor 
is known as Phrygian dominant, and that's the next scale we're going to look at here. And Richie definitely uh, likes uh, Phrygian dominant too. And that's going to basically be what E, F, G sharp, A, B, C, D, and then E again. <laughs> character or the sound of that scale. You know, really cool scale. Next up we're going to have the double harmonic scale, and this is just kind of a slight alteration to a Phrygian dominant. But here we're going to have uh, E, F, G sharp, A, B, C, and then uh, a D sharp. Now the interesting thing that happens right there, when we get back to E, we've got an F. So we've got three, you know, half steps right in a row right there. You know, very unusual scale, but I love that sound. It's very exotic and dark. scale we're going to uncover is the Hungarian minor scale, which is the fifth mode from the double harmonic scale. And that would look like this. And there we've got E, F sharp, G, A sharp, B, C. So there's that three, you know, half steps in a row right there. And then we've got D sharp to E. Friedman. Marty plays that scale a lot. Um, but those scales, uh, those five you know, minor uh, tonality scales, are very common in Richie Blackmore, not to mention Ingve. I just mentioned Marty Friedman. There's a whole bunch of guitarists that use those scales. The first lick from this live solo from 72 is kind of a blues idea. It's in uh, E7. And he's in a higher position, uh, kind of shape two of E minor pentatonic, I guess, up here. And uh, this lick actually reveals kind of a secret in Blackmore's phrasing. And I know when I was younger and I heard him play, I could hear these little shifts and slides and bends into notes, you know, kind of moving from a, a wrong note to a right note, so to speak. But I didn't really understand phrasing back then. And then when I learned a little bit more of his music, I noticed it and I thought, ah, that's what he was doing. And uh, the lick looks like this. And the interesting thing that's happening is what's, you know, being flirted with as far as this B note right here. Because he actually doesn't play that note, but he's kind of flirting with it. Because right there he's basically bending an A to kind of go up to that B note. And then right there he kind of does it again with B flat. And it's a simple phrase, but the way it's put together is really cool. But here's uh, Blackmore playing it. The next lick actually is one of Richie's uh, Snake Charmer licks, and it's E Phrygian dominant. And it's phrased and kind of played in a different way. It's using his little kind of inventive, you know, shift sliding techniques. Uh, but it looks and sounds like this. <laughs> And there you can see we're doing a little shift slide, you know, from E to F. And then a hammer-on pull-off phrase. And of course we could play that without the shift slide. And you could do... Which is how I would normally probably play that lick, but with his phrasing included, you know, you kind of just hear that blur uh, at the beginning of the phrase and that adds a little bit more, you know, personality or kind of a, a signature kind of flavor for that lick. The next lick's the slippery kind of blues lick. It reminds me of Angus Young for some reason, uh, but it looks and sounds like this. <laughs> You can 
can see he's kind of doing this little like chromatic move, um, you know, going up to that G and then heading back to the E right there. And at the end, of course, he does a lot of vibrato with his tremolo bar too, so you can add that in if you want. a bonus lick from this solo and this is this exotic kind of a ship slide idea and it honestly reminds me of what uh, George Lynch you know was doing like in the 80s and 90s uh, that kind of crazy you know fast ship sliding and I'm sure he still plays that lick uh, even today uh, it's kind of one of his signature phrases but I have a hunch he kind of stole it from Richie Blackmore and the lick looks like this <laughs> And there we're grabbing G-sharp and heading back to F. And then you're going to do a hammer-on pull-off there between F and G-sharp. And then just slide down to E. You know, really cool lick. And I like those slippery kind of quick shifts. You know, it, it kind of catches your ear. And it's like, hey, what's, what's going on? You know, you kind of hear this blurry... Uh, no thing happening, and I like that. That's gonna wrap this look at three licks from Richie Blackmore from 1972. And of course, I mean, he's a guitar legend. You know, he's influenced, you know, hundreds, if not thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of guitarists. So he's a very important, you know, pioneering player, and he's still active, which is so awesome. I mean, he was like one on the cover of Guitar World last year. So, uh, Anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content material. Thank you.